A bigger crowd at Petco Park tonight for the first time in more than a year. Good evening. I'm Shannon Handy and for Barbara Lee Edwards. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. This comes as the Friars go up against the first place Dodgers in a National League West showdown. Padres star shortstop Fernando Tatis Jr. is also returning tonight. News 8 Steve Fiorina is live at Petco Park with a preview. Hi, Steve. Hi, I've got a great place to be. My friend's condo overlooking Petco Park. We can watch the fans as they get seated for the uh, uh, Padres-Dodgers game tonight. A much larger crowd since COVID restrictions have been eased. Padres returning from a great road trip, winning five of seven, including the team's first ever no-hitter. And yes, there will be a celebration early tonight. We're gonna have a special pregame ceremony honoring Joe Musgrove and the franchise's first no-hitter. Thousands more fans being allowed through the gates today, and there's excitement. <laughs> Wow, can't wait to be back. It was awesome. We anticipate attendance or capacity rather will increase from about 10,000 to about 15,250 for this homestand. Huge revenue losses reported from the pandemic, 2.5 billion across the board in Major League Baseball. The Padres down 53 million so far, but the 2021 season is upon us. We got a great team. We got every to pitch it batting got everything. The expected return of shortstop Fernando Tatis Jr. from the injured list. Another reason fans are charged up. Oh yeah, Tatis. Seating will include socially distanced sections as before, but not all. We've kind of manifested the ballpark in response to what our members told us. And uh, it's about 25-ish sections that are going to be the fully vaccinated sections. The guidelines call for those 13 or older to show proof of vaccination, either paper or digital showing you've had both of the Moderna or Pfizer shots or the single Johnson & Johnson injection or show proof of a negative COVID test within the past 72 hours. Once inside the ballpark, masking will stay the same. Concessions will be fully reopened. And we'll watch Padres baseball in all its glory. Good luck finding a seat. Most of these games are sold out. However, if you go down to the old park at the park now called Gallagher Square. You might find something down there. There are a few people as well. Or you could be really lucky and have the balcony overlooking the park. Shannon, Carlo, eat yeah. your hearts out. So Steve, we're all here, Carlene, Carlo and I, very jealous. Two questions. One, are you gonna put that mic down and grab a cocktail right now? And two, when can we come over? <laughs> what time are you guys off the set? 11.35, Carlo. It might be over, 11.35. Oh, you go enjoy that game. I, I would guess. You go enjoy that game, Steve. We will. We're a little bit jealous of you. Have a good night. I'll bet you are. All right, switching gears now. Search teams will be out in force again this weekend. Looking for Maya Miliete, a Chula Vista mother of three who has been missing for more than three months. As News 8's David Gopperton reports, Maya's family is heading to Anza Borrego Desert in off-road vehicles. Oh. There's going to be a family-led search in the Anza Borrego Desert. The meetup point for the search is known as the Hollywood and Vine campsite in the Anza Borrego Desert. On Saturday and Sunday, the family of Maya Miliete will be there conducting a search effort that will extend all the way to the nearby Anza Borrego mud caves. So they'll be searching there in the area and around the mud cave area, and um, they just need all the help that they can get. Liliana Burke runs the Facebook page Maya Miliete's Search Warriors, where you can find more information on the weekend searches. You do have to have a four-wheel drive or an off-road vehicle because um, there's no roads to get there. If you want to stay closer to home, there's also a search starting Sunday morning along Proctor Valley Road. There's a huge wooden sign that says uh, Natural Resource Center. There's no way to miss it. We'll be um, driving out to our location and it's not gonna be a long drive. It's just a short distance from there. And if you are gonna go out and search, make sure you bring water, sunscreen, and good hiking shoes. We go through thick brush sometimes, uh, grass that can go up to our knees. It is rocky terrain. Sometimes it can be kind of slippery. So just kind of prepare as if you're going through a sturdy hike. 
we're just hoping that everybody can join us and help the family in bringing some justice for May and keeping her children safe. If you need any more information on either one of those searches, go to Maya Milietes Search Warriors Facebook page. We've posted a link at CBS8.com. Shannon? David, we know the family like to go out to the desert on the weekends. Is this why they're looking in that area this weekend? Exactly, yeah. The missing mother was part of the San Diego Jeep Club. She also owned a dirt bike, so it seems logical that they would search out in the desert. But keep in mind, the temperatures are going to be pretty hot out there this weekend, getting close to 90 degrees, so bring lots of water. All right, David Gopperson, you've been covering this story so well for us. Thank you. San Diego police need your help to find a driver they say hit a woman in Mission Valley and drove away. The 71 year old woman was near the front entrance of the Lowe's store on Northside Drive on Wednesday afternoon when someone in this car, a gold 2003 Honda Accord, struck her. Police say it has a California license plate of 4ZNN918. Again, that's a gold 2003 Honda Accord, California license plate 4ZNN918. The woman suffered a broken leg, head injuries, and is in the hospital with, in serious condition. Anyone with information should call San Diego police. A man accused of pepper spraying nearly a dozen San Diego police officers during a protest pleaded not guilty today. 28-year-old Denzel Drawn was arrested at a protest downtown last summer. Prosecutors say during a fight between protesters and police, Drawn picked up a can of pepper spray and used it on 11 officers. He faces more than a dozen felony charges for his alleged role in that melee. A North County city is taking steps to keep homeless people from coming back. Officials in Oceanside installed these large rocks where a homeless encampment was just cleared out along South Oceanside Boulevard east of the 5 Freeway. The city cleared out most of the people living there on Tuesday. A few did stay behind. This encampment grew over several months, drawing complaints from nearby residents. At least 50 people were removed and offered hotel vouchers. The city says it's now trying to find funding for more vouchers for people still living in the encampment. Today, thousands lined up in South San Diego for a chance to get a shot during a pop-up vaccination event at Southwestern College. Officials estimate there were around 2,000 people lined up this morning for a chance to get one of 400 available doses of the Pfizer vaccine. It feels really exciting. It feels like things are finally looking up. It's, there's going to be a change. No appointments were necessary today and shots were given on a first come first serve basis, but only to people in certain South San Diego zip codes. The rush is sure to grow across the county this weekend as all Californians 16 and older are now eligible as of yesterday. Tonight, county health officials are reporting 317 new coronavirus cases across San Diego. That represents 2% of 18,000 tests. Total COVID-related hospitalizations rose by 1 to 183. The ICU count fell by 2 to 60. Nine additional deaths are being reported tonight. That total is now 3,662. This week is National Dog Bite Prevention Week, and State Farm Insurance has released disturbing new statistics on a dramatic increase in dog bites in 2020, especially in California. As News 8's Alicia Summers reports, the lockdowns could be to blame. We thought the lockdowns were just affecting us people, but according to insurance claims last year, it's clear many pets were affected too. And experts worry with more people going back to work, dog bites could increase, and here's why. Anxiety has been at an all-time high for many this past year due to the lockdowns, and some pets can feel that uneasiness. When people are stressed out at home, dogs can act out with barking, destroying, and biting. Just in 2020, California was the number one uh, dog biting statistics throughout all of State Farm. We had over 400 dog bites and $26 million worth of claims paid out. According to State Farm, nationwide, more than 3,100 bites and more than $157 million were paid out in claims. The highest number of bites was recorded in March, the start of the lockdown. Anxiety is a little bit up, having to be home all the time, you know, between kids, work, Zoom, that whole quarantine life. 
and the dogs are feeling that same anxiety and effect as well. Also, many people adopted dogs during the pandemic, which means new pets may experience anxiety as their humans leave to go back to work and other activities. Slowly wean yourself away. Don't just be gone one day, you know, after you've been home 24 seven for a year. What's more, with dog parks closed during much of the lockdown, puppies were not able to develop social skills. A lot of times dog bites that we see as well happen with, it starts with the dog biting another dog. The owner tries to get involved to help the situation and they end up getting bit in the interim. Some insurance carriers will put restrictions on certain dog breeds, so it's important to check with your insurance agent before getting a dog. Experts fear another change could lead to more dog bites. So here is a chart from the San Diego Humane Society on how to prevent getting bit. When meeting a dog, watch, ask, invite, then touch. And don't pet a dog that is sleeping, tied up, scared, behind something, eating, or chewing a toy. Alicia Summers, News 8.